Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles with our guest who is an award-winning author, a business consultant, and a risk management expert. She is the CEO and the founder of a company known as Business MO, which is best described as a company that brings legal literacy to smart entrepreneurs and helps keep them out of court. It's based in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'd like you to meet our guest now. Her name is Hannah Hassel Kelchner. Hannah, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. You know, you're in a real fascinating business, and uh, you have done so much in the legal field. But before we get into this in depth, a little while ago you had a chance to answer some questions from William Shatner. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at a brief portion of that and see how that went. Okay? Let's watch. I understand you've been helping companies to advance their business through consulting services. Tell me how you do this, and, and do you feel it's moving America forward? Mr. Shatner, in speaking with executives, managers, and entrepreneurs around the country, it's crystal clear they're afraid of lawsuits, and it's no wonder. America's litigious. Lawsuits can destroy your bottom line, damage your reputation, and they're super frustrating because they're emotionally and financially draining. And instead of throwing money out the window defending your business in court, our consulting and training shows you ways to be smarter about risk management and how to embed legal literacy into your business DNA so that you can keep more of your hard-earned money. It moves America forward because you get more confidence and peace of mind in your ability to steer clear of disaster. Plus, the real magic happens when you discover how to profit from legal literacy to build more business wealth. You know, that's really fascinating. Tell me a little bit about the kinds of problems that, that you talk to these companies about. Well, you know, Doug, all businesses operate on a legal playing field. And the problem is that many business leaders, whether they're executives, managers, or entrepreneurs, they either don't realize that or they forget it. And so as a result, when they make business decisions, they don't realize the legal consequences of those decisions. And when that goes south, it magnifies other types of business risks. Well, you know, your background is really so interesting because you're so ingrained to this. You're a Duke undergraduate. You went to law school. Uh, you actually taught at Duke at the MBA program there and University of Virginia as well. Tell me a little bit about exactly how you go about doing this. What, what does the program consist of now? Well, a lot of the components that I used when I was teaching at the MBA programs, I mean, my goal there was to create more informed clients right. so that they had more information and better information in order to make informed decisions, smarter decisions, and manage their risk as opposed to be blindsided by it. And there's just concepts that aren't being taught in any other way that they couldn't learn any other way. And it's the same type of thing that I'm doing now through the Legal Literacy, Legal Leverage Academy rather, is to be able to give people those basic building blocks because they are more in control of their legal risk than they ever realized. You know, you've worked with a lot of big, large companies, mm -hmm. but the clients you primarily deal with now are what? Are they mid-sized and smaller companies, companies that don't yes. have uh, you know, a lawyer on staff, per se, I would assume? Would that be right? Yes, that's accurate. I mean, certainly I'm, I'm happy to work with larger organizations, but my heart is more with the smaller and mid-sized simply because they don't have those resources and because they don't have the same deep pockets that the large companies do to buy their way out of trouble when trouble does strike. And to me, those are really the backbone of our economy and what is going to move America forward. And so if we don't help them, well, then we put ourselves in trouble. And they wind up in court spending money that they could be better put to use in terms of putting new products and services out, helping their clients with their problems. And instead, it's being diverted to defending themselves in court. You know, I know you've said you're, you're really amazed at how little knowledge of the law a lot of these company owners have. They really haven't been trained that well to what to be aware of. No, they haven't, and it's staggering. In, in some segments of the market in terms of business size, the, the lack of the use of contracts 
they're used to thought of as uh, thought of as obstacles, which is a real shame because they're there to actually help people manage risk, manage relationships, and keep things on an even keel. And yet there are those that totally shun them to the point where it's an epidemic. Seriously, and it's a it's a problem because they don't realize how bad that is. Because somebody told me the other day, oh, we don't have a contract. It's verbal. It's like, oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. how do you know what it is? It's in my head. Okay, so now what happens next? How are we going to prove that? And the thing is, over a period of time, expectations shift, performance shifts, and then you've got no standard, no baseline to hold people accountable to. And that's where the friction comes in, that's where the hard feelings come in, and that's where litigation starts to come in. So that's, it's a concern. Employment, another huge, huge area, especially as businesses grow and they get past that friends and family stage. Now there are strangers in the business. That's great. They bring talent, they bring diversity, different points of view. But how are those expectations being managed? Not to mention, as far as on the employment side, there is also compliance issues. Someone told me the other day about a business that was started in New York and they didn't bother to do any withholding. These were high paid salaried people. You're kidding. No, I'm not. Six figures and there was no withholding. You think the uh, taxing authorities would find that interesting? Wow. Well, well. When, when you get engaged with a company, what happens? Do you go in and spend, you know, a, several days with them? Do you lecture them for today or does it vary? It varies. It varies. Sometimes people already have a preconceived idea of, you know, we, we need some help with, like, employment training. Or we're, we're having some supervisors that are being promoted. Now they're going to be doing more hiring. We, we need to be able to train them so that they don't ask dumb questions during the hiring process that will turn around and get us sued. Right. Well, that's one thing. Sometimes it's a matter of, well, we want to have a better idea of our risk profile. Where are our exposures? because we know we have some gaps, we're growing fast, we're kind of outrunning our headlights, we want to make sure the right systems are in place. This is the infrastructure, the steel, that they can then build on for their business. Those are the smart ones. They're anticipating, they're looking forward, and they're looking for some help. That's great. Sometimes if I'm giving a keynote, somebody comes up afterwards and says, you know that point that you made about the employment, about the contracts, about the intellectual property. We've been meaning to do something about that. We just haven't gotten around to it. We just don't know where to start. Those open up different types of conversations. So it's really interesting. People don't appreciate too often the kinds of legal resources in terms of tools and concepts that are even available in order to move their business forward. And then they can get the lawyer involved who's actually drafting the agreement, creating the trademark application or what have you. But just from a strategic point of view, how to dovetail that with their business strategy in order to move their business forward that's the sweet spot. You know, it's interesting, considering that you taught in the MBA courses at some of the best schools in the country, are these kinds of things not included in that curriculum? Oh. Do you have to be a lawyer to, to, to get this education? You know, it's really sad. There's a huge gap in our education system, yeah. Doug. And uh, some years ago, before I started teaching in the MBA programs, I actually did some research of the top programs to see which ones had a legal component, business law, basic basic pieces right. and for those that have accounting programs there is a, a, a requirement for a CPA exam that somebody have business law but it covers different types of things it's not going to look at it strategically some people call it buzzword bingo you know it's like okay. product liability this that, and that that type of thing which has its role and uh, that's that's all good but there was only one program out of all the top schools that had a requirement for a business law course for their graduate. You don't graduate if you don't take this course. The rest, if they even had one, it was an elective. Let me ask you about communication skills. Oh. Considering emails and the, you know, the hacking scandals that have been going on recently, is this an issue that, that obviously companies are aware of and concerned about or not? It's an issue that they should be aware of and for concerned sure. about, but they not, aren't necessarily. And, and it's one of my favorite topics because to the world is communication. You know, it's on social media, it's the emails, it's the text. We've got more ways to communicate than ever before, which is fabulous. But if I put my lawyer hat on for a second, it's all evidence. It's all evidence. So like, good, make some more. Things that used to be anonymous transactions uh, are now documented. There's an electronic trail. And all that stuff has to be reviewed, which is why litigation has gotten as expensive as it has. And all the more reason when you think about it, communications, you get to control that. So if you're smart about it, in terms of the content, 
what you say, how you say it, the medium you use to say it, you can really minimize the amount of inadvertent liability that you create. It's, it's that simple. And that is exactly what I help people with. I, I even created an online course for that called Bulletproof Your Communications because to me that is so vital. Without the evidence, you don't have a case. Yeah. But with the evidence, then they do have a case. Uh, you know, th this is a book that you've written. It's a, it's a pretty amazing story. Tell me what's, what this book really covers. That book is, is interesting in the sense that it, it was about 10 years in the making in terms of being able to structure it in a way that would appeal to business. And so many of the business legal books, they, they focus about how the law is taught in law school in terms of subject matter. Yeah. This starts with, let's start with a paradigm shift. Think of the law as being a business tool, a business resource to help you promote and move your business forward. And then what do you need to put in place in terms of what, what education needs to be put in place, what do your employees need to know, what structure needs to be put in place, what do senior management need to know. And one of my favorite chapters is on, on the ethics, the, the bit part about... Big subject. Yeah, huge subject. Yeah. What do the, the corner offices need to know? Yeah. Because no business will say, go ahead and break the law. They don't. But they create incentive structures that indirectly drive behaviors that cause people to stretch and cut corners, hoping that they don't get caught. Wow. Let me also ask you about the Legal Leverage Academy website. What yes. is that? Yes. Oh, it's, it's um, one of my favorites. It is an, an online learning portal. I'm, I'm pouring more and more resources into it in terms of uh, on-demand online e-training, e-courses, yeah. in terms of articles. And I'm also going to be incorporating uh, some of my audio from my online radio program, Business Confidential, so that it's all in one place. And it's all for the purpose of business leadership development because there are Very things good. you just don't know what you don't know. Legal leverage academy.com. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. This has been fascinating. We appreciate your being here. What a great, great story. Thank you. You're welcome. Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award to Hannah Hassel Kelchner, the founder and CEO of Business MO of Chapel Hill, North Carolina for the outstanding work she is doing to help keep moving America forward. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. This is, this is fabulous. This is wonderful. And uh, it's just an honor and a privilege to continue working and helping small and mid-sized businesses take their business to the next level. And it's just been great, all the support that I've had in helping to put this together. Thank you. Well said.